Chapter 4, Working with Optionals. Step-by-step -step movie, 4.1. We're going to create a playground that will let us try some code out. So from the Xcode menu, I select File, New, Playground. And I'm going to call this playground Optionals. And I can see my platform is set to iOS. I click Next, and I'm going to store it in my Documents folder, and click Create. So Xcode automatically adds this little sample at the top. Basically, we're creating a variable called string that says Hello Playground, but we'll go ahead and delete that. And you can see on the right-hand side is my results. So playgrounds are pretty neat. You can type code in, and the results will display on the right side, which is the results sidebar. And every time you type a new line of code, uh, it's executed from the top down all over again. So you'll see your values refresh on the right hand side. So I declare a variable called middle name of type string. So this is a non-optional variable, and that's because there's no question mark after it. If we put the question mark after it, you can see a nil appears on the right hand side. So this indicates that the middle name variable can contain a value that is either a string or a nil. So one of the rules of Swift, you cannot store nil in a non-optional variable. And let's give that a try. So I'm going to get rid of the question mark. It's no longer optional. Now if I say equal nil press return, I get a compiler error. If I click on that, it says type string does not conform to protocol nil literal convertible. Long story short, I can't store a nil in a non-optional variable. So now let's take a look at how we access optional values. And in Swift, you can't access an optional value directly. You have to unwrap the optional first to get at its underlying value. So I'm going to just get rid of this code here, and I'm going to add three other lines of code. I'm going to create a variable called first name. That's a string, and we'll assign it an initial value of Ryan. And we'll do a, another variable called middle name, which is also a string. And actually, we're going to make it an optional string, because not everybody has a middle name. And now we make that Michael. And we'll do a third variable called first and middle names. It's also a string. And so the only optional variable we've created is middle name. So now we're going to add code that tries to reference first name and middle name. So we've created this variable. We've declared it as type string. So I'm going to reference that variable now first and middle names and I say equals so I'm going to join the first value in the first name variable I'm going to put a space in here between it another plus sign and a middle name now as soon as I press return I see I've got a compiler error I click here and it says value of optional type string not unwrapped. Did you mean to use an exclamation mark or a question mark? So this is one of Swift's protection mechanisms. It forces you to acknowledge that middle name may contain a nil. Now it doesn't in this case, but you can't write code assuming that it will always have a value because it's marked optional. So as the compiler error here suggests, we can unwrap the optional by using exclamation mark. And uh, we can actually even take its suggestion to say, fix it for us. So I double click that. And you can see it's added, let's move this out a little bit. It added an exclamation mark at the end. And we can see that our compiler error has gone away. So this is something called forced unwrapping. And it manually forces the value in the middle name variable to be unwrapped. So notice over here, the middle name variable is uh, Ryan Michael. 
So although this works fine in this example, if middle name contained a nil, uh, this would blow up at runtime. And in fact, let's give that a go. I'm going to change this from Michael to nil. Click off of that, and immediately we get a compiler error. exe underscore bad underscore instruction. Uh, this is not good. So you would get this error in your app if you tried to force an unwrapping of a variable that contained a nil. So there's got to be a better way, and there is. We can use something called optional binding to unwrap an optional value. So let's put a value back in again. And our compiler error goes away. So I'm going to get rid of the forced unwrapping. And we're going to write something a little more friendly. What we're seeing on this line of code is a technique known as optional binding. At runtime, this if condition is checked. If middle name contains a string value, which it does right now, this condition evaluates to true. Then the middle name variable is unwrapped. The value is stored in the middle constant. And then the code within the curly braces is executed. So since we do have a value here, you can see our playground is being executed. And this is the code that's being executed. Uh, it takes first name, middle name with a space in between it, stores it here. Here's our result. And we do a print line, which prints out or displays the message that we've put in between double quotes. And it says middle name, not nil. So let's change this to a nil and see what happens. So now because there's a nil here, when this if condition is checked, it evaluates to false. And this value is not unwrapped. Instead, we go to the else, and we run the code between the curly braces. And so we don't have a middle name, so we say first name is stored here. It's just Ryan. And then we display this middle name is nil. So that's the optional binding technique. Now, there's one other way that you can unwrap an optional value, and that's using implicitly unwrapped optionals. And so that looks something like this. I'm going to put Michael back. And I'm going to say exclamation mark afterwards. So because we're using implicitly unwrapped optionals, this value is implicitly unwrapped for us when it's declared. Now, obviously, if you're not 100% sure that this variable will always have a value, you need to use a question mark instead. But if you're absolutely sure that it does, then using the implicitly unwrapped optional is fine. In fact, one place you often see this you can find it over here back in our Swift demo project inside of viewcontroller.swift. Remember this LBL demo variable we used earlier. It contains a reference to a label. And as I said earlier, that label is right here. And we notice that there's a connection. If I click on this label, we can see that it's attached to the view controller and the LBL demo property. If I go back here, this little circle indicates that there is a connection. When this application first runs, this variable contains a nil. But before we ever get to run the viewed load method, a reference to the label stored in here. So this is actually safe for us to put an exclamation mark. Uh, it does at times contain a nil, but not at a point that you have access to it. So it, this saves us from having to manually unwrap LBL demo constantly. We don't constantly have to do this sort of thing or that sort of thing. So we do it once when it's declared, and we know that this always contains a value. Now, if for some reason that connection gets broken, I could come in here and I could break that connection by clicking this. You are going to get a runtime error, but that's okay because you want to find this as a developer. If that connection is broken, you want to know it. 
you don't want it to just slide on past. When you're working with Objective-C, it just slides on past, and you don't know why your app's not working. In Swift, you break that connection, you're going to get a runtime error. And uh, I'd much rather find that here, and it tells me exactly what the problem is very quickly.